Hey everybody, I'm Dave. Welcome to the Radio Afterglow. I hope everyone had a great holiday season and a wonderful new year. It's 2018. And as I mentioned in my Christmas video, I'd hope to be more prolific in this new year. And so I uh, thought I'd get things started sooner rather than later. So I've got a few records I want to talk about today. This is, uh, again, the primary focus of my... I have two focuses, two foci of my collection or collecting habits. One is female-fronted bands and artists, and the other is Michigan-based bands and artists. Of course, I buy a bunch of other shit smattered here and there. But anyway, the primary uh, avenues that I collect are those two. And so I'm going to start off with the uh, female-fronted artists. And uh, to begin with, this is uh, the debut album from a band called The Vels, and it's uh, titled Velocity. This came out in 1984 on Mercury. And the Vels were, as you can see, um, graphically represented here, a uh, female-fronted trio. They're from Philadelphia. Alice De Cohen, DeSoto, I'm sorry, her, her real name's Alice Cohen, but she went by the stage name Alice DeSoto, um, is the lead vocalist. And this is a bunch of, I mean, it looks, it is exactly what it looks. It's uh, new wave pop dance sort of synth pop sort of stuff. There's the band a little bit closer there. Um, you know, it's okay. It, it's, it's mediocre. It, it's not that, not that great. Um, like, and this, like I said, this was their debut album. They had one more after this, um, before they broke up. Alice would go on to be involved with a lot of indie bands like Die Monster Die, and then she got into the visual visual arts and stuff like that but you know if you're into that whole new wave um, synth pop sort of stuff um, this this might be one worth checking out they had a minor hit with uh, look my way which I mean real minor hit it got some MTV airplay back in the day but if, if this is your kind of thing go ahead and check them out uh, otherwise it's it's really something that's probably best left to um, to those that are really, really deeply interested in uh, synth pop, bop, dance sort of stuff. Anyway, that's uh, Velocity by the Vels. Um, now this next artist, I, I really, I really enjoy her work. She really didn't uh, didn't get the love that uh, in the United States that she had gotten in, uh, or some continues to get in uh, the UK and Europe. Um, this was her sixth solo album. It's Susie Quattro's If You Knew Susie. And this, uh, this actually came out in 1978 on Rack Records in the UK and Europe. This is a uh, 1979, early 79 press on RSO Records, uh, the US release. And of course, Susie Quattro, uh, born in Detroit, with, along with her sister, was in a garage rock outfit called The Pleasure Seekers. Then did her own thing about this time. She was also starring in Happy Days as Leather Tuscadero. Um, you know, totally inspired, uh, you know, Runaways, Joan Jett, Pat Benatar sort of stuff early on. Uh, and, then, and then this album came along. Like I say, sixth album. There she is there. Um, she definitely went with a much more commercial approach here. As you can see, she's dropped the leather for the corduroy pants um, and pretty much dropped the rock. This is really, really countrified light rock. Think of if Andy Gibb met the Eagles. That's, that's the sort of stuff going on here. Um, she had a minor, minor hit with Stumbling In, a, um, um, a duet she did with... Um, Chris Norman of Smokey, yeah, and uh, eh, it's all right. But she's also got some covers on here: uh, The Kinks' "Tired of Waiting," uh, Tom Petty's "Breakdown," Rick Derringer's "Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo," and sadly, those are the better tracks on this album. Um, this definitely is not an entry point for somebody who's wanting to get involved in uh, Susie's music. It's uh, you definitely have to step prior to earlier albums, um, and this one is probably just something that uh, should be relegated to those who are OCD completists like myself. Otherwise, I mean, this is really just for hardcore Susie fans. Um, 
yeah, you know, and as transition albums go, it's kind of what you expect. They don't, uh, they don't work out so well, and this is definitely not, not a favorite, not a fan favorite, but, uh, eh, it's Susie, so. Now, another, uh, female solo artist who, uh, had quite a, quite a career over the last, or over, over many decades, actually, um, and I'm going to talk about Grace Slick. And uh, this is her, her debut solo album called Manhole. Now, I don't know if there's a double entendre there or not. But anyway, uh, you know, of course, Grace Slick, Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship, Starship. Um, very distinctive voice. I'm, I, I, even if you don't know her name, you've, you know her voice. But uh, uh, this came out in 1974 on Grunt. The Jefferson Airplane had just dissolved and what was to become Starship had yet to form um, and Grace did some work with Paul Kantner on a couple of albums and, and some project sort of experimental sort of albums and what what this album is is again is, is kind of experimental uh, Grace was kind of in a um, a low point in her in her life at this time she was kind of drinking heavily and, and things like that and um, she was joined in the studio by what pretty much everybody else in that would be in Jefferson Starship except for Papa John Creech uh, for this album. And what this is, is like I said, really experimental. She's really kind of, uh, I, I really don't know where she's going with this. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard to take really. It's, it's not, this is, this is, whoa, meandering sort of stuff. Um, she, she did all the artwork, which is kind of cool. Um, the lyrics are you know, bilingual, English and Spanish going on. Um, I'm really surprised this actually got released on Grunt. But uh, it, has, it came with this kind of cool booklet, um, lyric booklet. And uh, I, won't, I won't thumb through the whole thing, but it's, uh, you know, having the lyrics in front of you definitely helps. Um, supposedly this was uh, going to be a, uh, or is billed as a soundtrack to a movie called Manhole, which was never filmed, never created. But, uh, I don't know. Yeah, this is definitely something that you, you need to really like Grace Slick's uh, creativity to get into this album. It just didn't do it for me. It'll stay in the collection because, again, like I said once before, and I'll say it a million more times, I'm an OCD completist, and uh, so here it is. But yeah, this is, you know, it's stick to the Jefferson Airplane stuff um, and some of the Starship stuff, or Jefferson Starship stuff, if you want your Grace Slick fix. This one you might want to steer away from. And kind of sticking with, with Grace, that was her first debut or the first debut, her debut solo album. Uh, this was her last solo album. This is Software. Came out in 1984 on RCA Records, and as you can see, it definitely has a different tone uh, than the uh, previous album. This is a collaboration between Grace and Peter Wolf, and he contributes uh, all sorts of synthesizer and electronic and techno sort of influences to this album and that's exactly what this is she, it's like she's taking she's taking a shot at the techno pop of the era you know like i said 1984 and it's okay it, it's it's better than manhole it's much more listenable than manhole um there's a track on here it was actually written by peter beckett uh, called through the window which is it's probably the standout track for me on this album you might want to look that up on youtube and see what there is to see but uh other than that you know it's 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 kind of it's oh it's okay it's not bad it's it's not exactly synth pop it's not it's not dance it's not uh it's not rock for sure I, the guitars are are fairly vacant from this album replaced by synthesizer and stuff uh not as cool as van halen uh in that regard but anyway uh, so yeah, this was her last solo album, as it were, and then she was it, Starship was going on about the same time. So think knee deep in the hoopla, but not as uh, catchy. Um, yeah, but this is definitely better than Manhole, and uh, yeah, I guess a good bookend to her uh, solo career. 
All right, lastly, this um, this is a band that I really enjoy. Uh, I know a few of you out there who I subscribe to also enjoy, enjoy them as well. Um, this is a self-titled EP from the Bangles. Uh, this was right after they... This came out originally in 1982 on Faulty Records. This is a 1983 IRS Records copy. Um, I haven't got my hand on a Faulty Record yet, but maybe I will. Anyway, uh, and this was right after they changed their name from the Bangs to the Bangles. Uh, they did. Uh, they got four originals on here, uh, written by Susanna Hoffman and Vicky Peterson, and then there is a cover of the La Di Da's "How Is the Air" up there. And uh, of course, you know it's it's Paisley Underground stuff, uh, a little bit garagey, a little bit poppy, hints of where they would go uh, in the next albums, or you know when their full length started coming out, uh, Vacation and and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's fun. It's it's definitely a fun album. If you're into that Paisley Underground scene, uh, which I am, uh, I thought this was a pretty fun, uh, fr pretty fun listen. Pretty pretty cool to hear where you know they they were coming from before they really broke big. And also, this is the uh, only album which features uh, original bass player Annette Zelinskis. Uh, she was replaced by Michael Steele after this album. But uh, let's see if we can see her there. Uh, Yeah. yeah, here she is. I couldn't. Have... There we go. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, definitely a fan of the Bengals. Now, one more thing. I usually don't want to uh, to throw CDs in on these vinyl updates, but this CD I just have to talk about a little bit, real, really, really quickly. This is a self-titled um, album from a band called Eloise. It's a six-track EP. Now they are a, a female-fronted indie rock band out of Detroit. Ferndale, to be more specific. Uh, this came out in 2003. It is a self-released album, self-released CD. Uh, I was really, really surprised to find this because it is a... Um, let's see if you, I don't know if you, how well that's going to show up. Uh, probably not very well. But anyway, this is a uh, not-for-sale, promotional use only, not mastered copy, so promo. thought it was pretty cool to pick it up. Didn't know anything about this band. Um... But I don't know if you can see the lineup on there. Uh, Mandy Taylor is the singer, but but what caught my eye was um, keyboardist Leslie Hardy. I thought, could that be the same um, Leslie Hardy that was in Murder City Devils? Uh, turns out, yes, it was. And um, I couldn't find anything about anything at all about this album online. Uh, what it is, it's it's like I say, it's it's kind of jangly indie rock um, you know par for the course for that time early 2000s and so I actually reached out to Leslie and she was gracious enough uh, to spend some time on the phone with me talking about this and this is apparently a one-off uh, this band lived just long enough to put this album together they didn't even have an, a real release so this master, not mastered copy is about all there is um, there's just a handful of these that they put out and uh, damn, how lucky was I to get one of these. And it's good. I mean, it's not great, but um, just a little piece of Detroit uh, music history that uh, I really enjoy and uh, female fronted to, be, to boot. All right, I'm going to put, uh, I think I'm going to do a little needle drop of uh, Victim of Time as we close out this video. So a little 30 second clip maybe just to get you an idea of what it is. All right, guys, uh, thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, Hopefully I'll be getting some more videos up here in the next couple of weeks and we'll talk some more about Michigan bands. We'll talk about some non-Michigan, non-female bands and, uh, you know, hope to hear from you. All right, everybody take it easy. Later.